Hey guys, looks like it's beer 30. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. everybody welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today <clears throat> thanks so much for stopping by I certainly do appreciate it uh, today's beer comes from I think it's a collaboration beer between Cloudburst Brewing and the Holy Mountain uh, this is uh, says Fresh Hop India Pale Ale 6.8% uh, uh, when I typed in Holy Mountain wet wired uh, on beer advocate they're returning it as a pale ale, american pale ale and that's the one of, not what it's saying on this can so i don't know where they're getting their information from uh these guys are in washington state and they also have it at 6.5 percent where this one says it's 6.8 percent so i don't know if they each did one uh, it looks like it's a collaboration uh over to untap they have it at 6.8% and they're calling an American IPA. So the information that Bear Average got uh, not accurate for the one I have in front of me. Uh, they also say it's 50 IBUs. Uh, and they're saying it's even got a can on date in their description of 10 9. This one says it was canned on the same day. 10 9 20. So uh, this was sent to me by Neil. So thanks a bunch, Neil. I do appreciate it. It said it's a wet mosaic IPA collaboration with Holy Mountain and Peralt Farms. So, Cloudburst and Holy Mountain and Peralt Farms. So I don't know if the Peralt Farms is growing the hops or the barley or, or what the, that, that farm is growing. Uh, it says, when our forces combine, we make you your wettest dreams come true. Hmm. I don't know about all that. Uh, it says two row pills, oats and wheat, and it says 26 pounds of wet mosaic hops. A lot of hops, but I don't know what size tank that they're brewing in. Uh, might be a lot, may, may not be a lot, depending on what size tank it is they're brewing it in. So we shall see here, guys. Big 16-ounce plain Jane can, silver can, what they stick on wrap around label, huh, as to the way it should be done, instead of printing up a bunch of fancy artwork on cans. I'm just not a big fan of that. Just adds the cost of the beer. People say, oh, it's only going to add a penny or two. Whatever, it's still adding cost to it. When, I mean, are you saving the cans? My God, you're going to have a lot of cans sitting around. <laughs> I don't save them, guys. I, I don't. When I first started brewing beer and, and doing reviews, I used to save labels off of bottles. But I got to be too much hassle, and there's got to be too many of them, and I just stopped uh, Anyway, it is what it is. We got ABV 6.8, 50 IBUs, and it was canned on 10, 9, and 20. So we got all three bits of information, so that's all we need to talk about. So let's stop talking and start pouring. Once again, thanks to Neil for sending me the beer. It looks like it's fairly well carbonated, so I'm going to pour it fairly gentle here, guys. Because when I do the little swirly swirl thing, that's just going to intensify the head quite a bit. And we've already got a finger of head already pointed gently. And that's about all I'm going to give you right now. And we got about two and a half fingers of head on there. It is fairly cloudy, fairly hazy. Uh, I can see light through the thin part of it, and that may change when I get to the bottom end of the can pour it in there. But right now, it does look like a hazy, unfiltered beer, but I wouldn't classify it as a New England style looking at it. It does look good, though. It's got a nice, a nice color to it. To the nose we go. And these bubbles are pretty big on the side, so I don't think the head's going to stick around a long time. Very nice citrusy notes. 
and maybe a slight hint of some pine, maybe a little bit of uh, lemon, orange, but the citrusy notes, citrusy notes are standing out more than anything else, very citrusy. And uh, definitely getting hints of grapefruit, so that's the, the two biggest notes that I'm getting. So, let's dive in. Cheers everybody. Cheers Neil. Very smooth, very citrusy. I am getting grapefruit, maybe a slight hint of some oranges in there, tangerines. Kind of one dimensional, being a single hot beer. Still very tasty. Alcohol is well hidden. It's a very pleasant beer. For a single hot beer, it's very tasty. A lot of hot presents. So, 26 pounds of wet mosaic did the trick. That's a tasty beer. And being here in this part of Virginia, it's very hard to come by tasty beers like this. Not a lot of breweries are doing these. So I'll, even though it's not quite to 7%, it's 6.8, and that's probably close enough for me. If this was available here, I would probably buy this beer. It's tasty enough for me. Well, let's see if we can get the rest of it in there. See if it changes anything. See if it gets any cloudier or if it gets any sediment out of the bottom of the can. I don't see any particles or anything settling to the bottom of the glass and I don't think it changed the appearance any. It may have clouded up a little bit more. It's a little more cloudier in the bottom of the glass than it was before. It's pretty close to a New England style now as far as the appearance goes. But it doesn't have the... When you do a single hop beer uh, you're not going to get like you if you're doing five or six different hops. That's where you get all the uh, tropical fruit nodes and, and all kind of different peaches and pineapple and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so uh, a lot of times the, the, the single hop beers, when they just use one one particular hop for everything, the bittering and the flavor and uh, the aroma and they dry hop it or anything with the same hop. But, a lot of times they're kind of one-dimensional to me anyway. Uh, very tasty beer though. Like I said, the biggest recommendation I can give a beer is tell you that I would spend my money on it. And this one's pretty damn tasty. I probably would buy this beer even though it's not quite to 7%. But it's close enough for this guy. Especially since I can't get a whole lot when I go to the beer store uh, to buy beers like this. I'm just damn lucky that I have the wonderful subscribers and breweries that do send me these awesome world-class beers. So, it's very much appreciated. It's right out of the fridge. Let me go sip on it. I'll be right back. All right, guys. I'm back. I've been sipping them for a while. Awesome lacing is left on the glass. This is a pretty tasty single hop beer to me. Uh, not to the category of the multiple hop New England style beers are, but it's pretty tasty. Uh, it's a little thin and watery to me. Uh, but it's still very, I would buy this beer, guys. I, if I could get it here, I would buy this beer. It's close enough to me uh, that I would buy it. I would spend my money on it. Uh, there are some people who probably say, oh my God, that's the best thing I ever tasted. And there are some other people that probably wouldn't say that. Uh, I find it very tasty and refreshing, and I would buy it. So it's close enough to my AB range, my go-to range, that I would buy it being a 6.8 percenter. Uh, very pleasant. Very easy drinking. Alcohol is super well hidden. Very tasty. Final chug. But it's a tasty beer, guys. Uh, it's not in my 10 category, but it's pretty damn close. And like I said, if you say it's a 10 beer, I wouldn't argue with that. To me, guys, I'm going to give it a 98. Uh, it's pretty damn close. Uh, so, uh, I enjoyed it. It's a very, very tasty beer. Very well made beer. 
and uh, dates on it, ABV's on it. It is an IPA and not a pale ale like Bear Average got. And even when I looked at the first comment there, uh, the guy says it was an IPA. So uh, somebody needs to update that. It's not a pale ale. It's an IPA. And it's got 50, IB, 50 IBUs. Is that what I said? Yeah, 50 IBUs is what Untapped has got. So that's very low IBUs for an IPA. I mean, there are pale ales that have... Uh, more bitterness or hop bitterness to it than that so uh, it's fairly low uh, easy drinking IPA low low IBUs on this one so I can see why people might think it's an uh, uh, pale ale instead of an IPA with the the IBUs being uh, down to 50 but uh, it is an IPA it says that on the can so like I said I don't know if uh, Cloudburst did one at their facility and Holy Mountain did one at their facility because they're it's a collaboration beer, but a lot of times each brewery will do that recipe. Uh, so uh, I don't know. I don't have that information, guys. So uh, 98 for me. Uh, beer Aggregate says, and they're calling it a pale ale. They have 89. It's better than an 89. So uh, it's what it is. Over to Untapped, they have it at 4.46. Awesome numbers from those guys. And that's about where I'm putting it to. It's definitely an 8 beer, guys. And it's in the upper. Not quite to the 10, but pretty damn close to me. 98 for me. So if you've had Wet Wired uh, from Cloud Beer from Holly Mountain and Cloud Burst, I'm looking at the Cloud Burst version on Untapped. But... Uh, like I said, each brewery may have done their version of it. That happens a lot of times. Even when it's a collaboration beer, so one brewery, each brewery will do uh, that recipe and produce their own packaging and stuff. So uh, It has uh, both their names on the label, so I'm not sure if that happened or not on this particular beer. So if you've had this one, that's what the can looks like. Uh, and I don't know if the other brewery has a different label or, or what. I don't have that information, but this is a tasty beer. So... Uh, if you've had it, let me know what you think. Uh, until we meet again, let's go see what's in that bridge.